Hello and welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome, we are very glad to have you here. In this video we will go in depth about why it is very important to choose the right power source for powering up DSO-138 oscilloscope. We will give an overview of couple of different power sources, their pros and cons, and what should be guiding principle when choosing appropriate power source. So, let's get started. Before we jump into debate about power sources, let's see what are the power requirements. According to manufacturer, the DSO-138 oscilloscope requires 9V DC power supply, with minimum of 200 mA capacity. That equals to minimum of 18 watt power supply source. Although, there is mention in device's documentation, that you can use anywhere between 8 to 12 volt power supply, it is best to stick to manufacturer's original recommendation. So, now that power requirements are known, we can proceed to choosing the right power source. By design, ACDC adapter takes household AC input from ordinary wall outlet and transforms it to desirable DC output. Depending on country where you live, that input is 110 or 230 volt. Type of current is alternating current. The output of ACDC adapter is direct current output of selected voltage. At almost absolute certainty, we can claim that every one of us have or at one point in time had this kind of AC-DC adapter, with adjustable voltage output and changeable connectors. Their flexibility and adaptability to various power requirements and changeable connectors makes them logical choice. But is that so? Let's put aside their flexibility, and let's take into account what really matters to us in this scenario. That is quality of power output. Quality in this context means stability of output, and absence of noise. That means, we want, and expect, steady, and noise-free, 9-volt output at all times. We do not want output to increase or decrease, more than marginally, from desired 9-volt. Simply put, we want straight 9-volt DC line, at all times. So, let's take our adapter, set the output to 9-volt, attach appropriate barrel connector and let's power our oscilloscope. At this point in time, we will not provide any input signal to the oscilloscope. We will detach probe from BNC connector. Also, setting CPL switch to any of three positions, GND, AC, or DC, makes no difference. The CPL switch determines nature of filtering of input signal. It has no influence on power source or power connector. Let's set time division parameter to 5 millisecond. As we can see, there are a lot of spikes. Those spikes are called interference. They are undesirable byproduct of inner workings of power adapter. Now, let's see how that interference influences signal. Let's attach our probe to signal generator. We will set signal generator to generate square signal. From oscilloscope calibration video, we know that ideal square signal has sharp edges and straight vertical and horizontal lines. So, that is what we expect to see on our display. As we can see, somehow, our spikes have merged with our input signal. Instead of clean and square signal, we have a lot of spikes and interference displayed on the screen. This is a direct result of poor quality of power supply output. Some of you, who are watching this video, can intervene and say, there are ways to mitigate the interference, by using appropriate capacitors. And, you are correct. But, at this point in time, we are still learning basics about oscilloscopes. We are very far away from noise filters, and their application in noise reduction. That is topic for some future video. Back to our power supply. As we can observe, this type of AC-DC power adapter is not adequate power supply for our oscilloscope. Let's summarize and see what are some of pros and cons. First, let's see what are some pros for using AC-DC adapter. First, an obvious one, is their ubiquity. Almost certainly, we all have one of these, laying around somewhere in some drawer. 
Next, we can use power from wall outlet, to indefinitely power up our oscilloscope. Now, for the cons. First obvious, and most important one, is bad quality of power output. It introduces a lot of interference and noise. This interference makes it impossible to observe any input signal, with any measure of fidelity. Second, it wastes energy. These kinds of adapters are not very energy efficient. That means, that in a process of transforming current from AC to DC, and stepping down voltage from 110 or 230 to 9 volt, a lot of power is wasted and dissipated as heat. After a while, when you touch the adapter, you will notice, that it gets very hot. A golden rule in electronic is, achieve your goal with as little power consumption, as possible. In conclusion, short and simple, no. Now, we will use 9 volt battery to power up our oscilloscope. For this purpose, you will use white power connector on the oscilloscope. Since there is no connector on oscilloscope to attach our battery directly, we will have to make a cable and connector ourselves. The simplest way is to take two DuPont wires, that have at least one female end. You can strip the other end, if there is male or female connector at the end, and then solder the wires directly onto the battery. More elegant way is to use 9 volt battery snap connector with wires. You can then connect female DuPont wire with connector wires and you have a cable and connector to power up the oscilloscope via 9 volt battery. As in previous example, with AC-DC adapter, let's detach out probe from BNC connector, set CPL switch to any position, and adjust time base to 5 millisecond. To get better signal resolution, you can set SEN1 and SEN2 switches to 0.1 mV and X1 positions, respectively. Let's power up the oscilloscope by attaching the battery. Now, observe the signal on the display. It is a straight line, with no spikes, or any other signs of interference. Now, this is what we aim to achieve. Interference and noise-free line on the display. If we now attach a signal to our oscilloscope, you see that we get a square signal, with no distortions, and very little noise in form of stray pixels. The difference in lack of signal distortion becomes even more evident, when we choose a different kind of input signal, for example, sine or saw type of signal. Let's summarize and see what are some of pros and cons. First, let's see what are some pros for using a battery. Obviously, the most important one is no interference, and no noise in power supply. Consequently, this enables display of high-fidelity input signal. Next, batteries are small and compact, easy to carry, so you get your oscilloscope to be a portable device, easy to move around, and deploy wherever, and whenever you need it. Now, let's see some of the cons. First, batteries get depleted. So, after a time, you will need to purchase another battery. This can amount to some cost, if you use oscilloscope for prolonged periods of time. Second, by discarding empty batteries, you create an unwanted waste. Batteries are not environment friendly. Next, you need to rig a connector for battery and onboard power connector. This can be an obstacle, if you are not experienced enough, and do not possess adequate skills, or tools to make it yourself. You can always buy already made snap connector, with barrel connector at the end. So, in conclusion. Batteries as well, have some pros and cons. But, our need for high fidelity signal display, makes the batteries the first and obvious choice. Also, there are other types of power sources that you can use for this purpose. There are many different types of 9 volt power adapters, chargers, power bricks, and etc. Next, there are professional power sources, that allows you to select desired power output, but they are costly and bulky. If at any point in time, you opt to use one of these for your power supply source, the best way going about it, is to observe if there is any, 
and how much of interference and noise introduced by power supply when the oscilloscope is powered up. One of more interesting ideas for power supply is repurposing old computers power supply unit, but that is something we will cover in future video. To summarize, your guiding principle when choosing the appropriate power source should be the fidelity of signal. All other concerns are secondary. This concludes our video about choosing the right power supply for our DSO-138 oscilloscope. Please, before you leave, show your appreciation by liking this video, sharing it, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.